Greetings, Earthlings. It is I, Alex. Al, I realized just today that I kind of left everybody hanging for a while. So for those of you who have been wondering where the heck I've been for the last like week and a half or so not posting videos, let me fill you in. Now, I already filled in my, uh, oh, the stupid auto exposure. Hang on, let me see if I can fix that. Anyway, hopefully that's fixed. I already filled in my Patreon subscribers in a uh, Patreon post, but it occurred to me that I didn't let everybody else in on what's going on. So this is what I've been doing. Um, as I mentioned in the last q and I, I don't know, a couple different videos, uh, I'm going to be start, going to be start, going to start doing live streams. And I've been gearing up for the first one. So I had to do the setup, like all the computer stuff, figure out the, the mics and the cameras and all that nonsense and prep the project that I want to be doing. Now, eventually what I want to do is like, whatever is like of interest to me or, or the community or, you know, so, something comes across my lap, like I get a, sent a printer for review or something like that, or a part. Um, I want to be able to like do so, have the uh, choice of doing something that a live stream and plan to do one about like a month or so. And I'd like to get on a regular schedule, but there's a lot of things I like to get on a regular schedule that haven't happened yet. So anyway, I planned for this to start in January so I could do like January, February, March, but I got held up waiting for parts. And then when they did come in, which took forever for the ones that had to come in from, you know, overseas, uh, then I got some wrong stuff and some things that just didn't work out. So anyways, I've been just going crazy the last week and a half or so trying to get all the details finished up. Now, the original plan was that uh, I was going to build a uh, design and build a printer from scratch to replace the test bed printer over there that I've been using in all of my videos. Now I have a couple printers here. Some of them actually are in running shape, um, but I wanted to do one using some of the things that I've been talking about lately and using some like, you know, old tech and seeing how it still applies. So um, I won't spill all the beans, but Basically, that's what I was using, like, the high wind rail stuff for, a lot of, like, the, the setup with the trinamics and all that kind of jazz. So what I will say is this is going to be a performance per dollar centric build. Now, I intend on, like, designing and building from scratch uh, a couple different printers over the lifetime of this channel, and I'll probably do, like, a... Um, you know, different kinematic systems and, you know, see how they test out and uh, try out different parts and boards and firmwares and things like that. So this one is going to be like, spend as little money as you can, unless it makes sense to go up to the next thing, because it's a huge performance benefit, that type of thing. So I'm going to try to squeeze by with like, the cheapy import high wind rails and like, uh, you know, other cheap parts, um, to an 8-bit board, Marlin, trinamic drivers, a ramps, that type of thing. But I also don't want to sacrifice performance for the sake of cost. So there's going to be some interesting and different and innovative stuff in there. And uh, so catch catch the stream if you want. The format's probably going to be me saying, hi, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And bus. Sorry, I have the vent open because I'm printing things over there. Um, the format's probably going to be, I'll, you know, do all the greetings, let everybody know what's going on, and then I'll walk through various parts of the printer, and then we'll go through and do some test prints and setups, and I'll answer questions in the chat. Um, I'll have, like, I'll try to have, like, super chat enabled if I can figure out how to do all that stuff. Uh, so everything that you're used to in, like, the live streams and that type of thing. And then um, probably do, like, a, an open Q&A at the end, or... You know, maybe that's not necessary if uh, enough questions are answered throughout the course of the, you know, the printing, that type of thing. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Now, the problem was figuring out scheduling. Now, I wanted to do it uh, last weekend of February, but like I said, parts, schmarts, and all that stuff. Um, what happened was some of the, the um, rails that I ordered got back-ordered, and they said it was probably going to be next week. That was the last week of February that bled into March. And then I just got a notification that they still didn't come. So I had to do a whole bunch of redesigns and reprint and, and all that kind of stuff. And that just ate up a huge chunk of time. Um, plus I had to like iterate through redesigns of things. I ended up printing out like 13 different variations of the extruder to find one that, uh, that worked well enough. So anyway, that's just why it took so long. 
Now, the original plan for the printer was I was actually going to build it on camera, but then I realized, like, this is not a kit. Like, there's no instructions, so if I bolt the whole thing together, you know, and then can't get to a screw inside and have to take it all apart, like, that's just a huge waste of time. So I think what I'm going to do is get everything pre-built and set up, and I'll have a couple different, I'll, I'll uh, you know, have the... the um, the IDE open with the firmware there. So I'll pre-flash basic firmware and then we can do different settings and, you know, see how it goes. Now, anyway, I was talking about schedule. Scheduling wise, I can't do it this weekend, but well, talk about the day. I'd like to do it Saturday in the afternoon Eastern time, not Eastern United States time. So probably like two to four ish Eastern time, something like that. Um, that puts it in a pretty decent place for everybody like kind of around the globe to be able to catch it either before they go to sleep or right after they wake up if they want to, but I will be posting the stream on the page and then I will take a bunch of the, um, the question sections that we do and I'll edit them into like a Q and a video that's shorter without the whole live stream and put that separately because a lot of people like the Q and a stuff. Um, but they're not going to be able to catch the live stream or some people just don't like live streams because it is kind of random and there are, you know, segments of silence and, you know, hitting things with a hammer and that type of stuff. Two to four, probably what somewhere around there. Um, on Saturday, not this Saturday coming up because that's tomorrow and not the Saturday after that because I live in South Philadelphia and it's the day before St. Patty's Day. So they have all, I live on a super popular street. So that day they have like parades and they do like the pub crawls. And I think they have like, um, what do you call it? Like open container law is like out the window. So they just let everybody like walk around with alcohol. So people just go crazy. They do like the, the running of the elves and, um, Irish marching bands and things like that. <clears throat> and that usually starts at like noon and ends, you know, after the sun goes down. So obviously that's out because it'll just be a cacophony while I'm trying to get this done. So the following weekend, Okay, so now let's do the regular question and answer stuff where I'm just going to pull up. I didn't have time to pre-select these questions, so I'm just going to pull up the YouTube comments right now, and I'm going to go through them and answer some questions because I haven't done this in quite a while. So let's see what we have here. Oh, I closed the window because I'm just that smart. Okay, now I'm just going to be reading here, and I've already answered some of these on YouTube. Actually, I just answered some of them, but I'm going to go ahead and answer some of them anyway. Uh, let me see. Uh, Raymond asked, uh, I'm considering a 32 bit large keyboard for my core XY printer. What advice? Oops. I can't read that underneath my camera cause I'm dumb. Uh, what options or advice would you offer on such a choice? Now, large is, that's a company I've, I kept my eye on. They seem to be making decent stuff in like an interesting ecosystem type of thing, but it's all closed source. And not only is the former like closed, but it's encrypted. So that's kind of counter to like the rep rap communal type of a thing. So I steer clear of companies like that. It's companies that I steer clear of are ones that either like blatantly rip people off and then don't comply, you know, when they're told about it. Um, if then they go back and like, they try to make good, like I give them the benefit of the doubt because I think uh, a road to redemption is very important for these companies. You can't just say like, you suck. And then like never talk to them again. If they make an effort, then I give them the benefit of the doubt. Or if they're good boards, but, and open source, but they're bad for the community because, you know, the people are dicks or something like that. Um, but the completely so closed source guys, I'm like, meh, what, what am I going to do? What am, what am I, what, uh, you know, there's not, I do a, a tech channel talking about like the nuts and bolts and things. So if something's just like done like an iPod or something like that, I'll be like, it's pretty. So anyways, um, there, there was a fellow who I've uh, communicated with a little bit on different projects uh, pertaining to like Marlin firmware and bootloaders and things like that named uh, JC. I, he goes by like XC000 something on uh, XC0005, I think, um, on 
GitHub. Uh, he was doing a like hack a day reverse engineering type of a thing on those boards. I don't know what kind of progress he made because that was like months ago that I that I uh, noticed that project. So you could you could try to dig that up on hack a day and see if he's made any progress. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not supported by like Marlin or anything like that yet, but I, I could be wrong. So check if you're really want to do the large thing, like check with Marlin, check with Clipper um, and just see where it stands but since they do have that closed ecosystem and uh don't have any of the source files out there like getting a a firmware set up for that with all their peripherals and pins and whatever their communication product protocol is for their uh their display board or control panel whatever you want to call it um that's that's kind of tough so yeah just bear that in mind um ricardo nilson asks how does an air pump such as bird air example for example uh fare in comparison to a radial fan i would think uh, even more pressure than a blower but less cfm nevertheless with appropriate directioning of the air it could make up for the lack of cfm or question mark what's your take my take is like i, I definitely want to try that and my thought was to um like make like a small vortex tube that does the uh you shoot the air in one side and it kind of blows hot air out the back and blows cool out out the front but you need a reservoir with compressed air to do that um right over there i'm not going to grab it because it's actually propping the window open um i have got at a thrift store a compressor and tank for a um an airbrush it's like that big it's a little tiny compressor it was like 15 bucks or something and i wanted to try that for that sort of concept, because that would give below ambient cooling, because that decompressed air plus the vortex tube would drop the temperature of the air coming out, then you wouldn't necessarily need as much flow and work on that. So that was just a concept of like when I was going through that video, um, like, you know, wacky 3D printer ideas or something like that. I talk about like having a more nimble hot end, uh, which we don't have yet, but that's something I want to tinker around with and more responsive cooling system. So something that can cool much more quickly uh, or back off if it needs to, that that would go along with that sort of a system. And it would be great for like, you know, bridging and overhangs and things like that, but only if you can get it tweaked in. And I don't know how to work that in with the firmware and all this type of stuff. So, um, yeah, it is something I want to try. It's on the massive list of things that I'd like to do that I just haven't had time to get around to. Uh, cool zombie says as a metalhead, every time I open a video from this guy, my day gets better. Have a sub, my good man. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. EKG 98 says, uh, BOM in GitHub is 30 a five amp fuse. That's referring to the ramps 1.6. That's good to know. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. I, you don't have the ability to like go back and change videos anymore. Um, in YouTube, you can like splice things out, but like replacing it with different parts and putting those like annotation placards doesn't exist anymore. So when I get more information on those videos, I'm not really sure what to do other than like pinning a comment or something like that. But since I made that video, they uh, went back and made the source open for the board and you can go on and see what they spec for it. So yeah, uh, Mr. EKG98 uh, said from the bill of materials, it's 30 amp fuse or a uh, 30 volt fuse. I assume it means 30 volts says 30 amp, but whatever. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, there was a question uh, about the ramps 1.6. Somebody said they smoked um, two tango boards already and they're cautious about the ramps and wanted to know how to set up a BL touch sensor um, using a ramps 1.6. And that made me think like, yeah, I haven't done a video on... Um, uh, what do you call it? Sensorless home or not sensorless homing the, uh, bed leveling it with the, I uh, actually in the reply I said sensorless homing. That's not what I meant. I should edit that. Um, yeah, for the, uh, the pro bed leveling auto bed leveling type stuff. I really should do a video on that, but, um, the, I, the, those sort of like, uh, common novel things. I usually just let the other channels do it because I know like, uh, Tom's channel has done a bunch of stuff. Like everybody's done stuff on that, but, um, I'll do it in my, you know, kind of step-by-step nerdy style. 
uh, when I can have a chance to get around to it just to walk everything through. I don't have a BL touch. I have a bunch of different inductive sensors. Maybe maybe I'll grab one and see how it is. As far as I know, they're fairly similar, but they have the little you know servo pin on there that you have to worry about. So I'm not sure why this guy was blowing his tangos out, if it was related to the BL touch, if it was drawing too much current or something like that. Um, <clears throat> And inductive probes can be goofy because they don't operate at the voltages that we operate at. So yeah, I will make a video for that. That's a that's a good point. Oh yeah, this was on the the video of gluing wood to aluminum. Um, Aubrey Kuhn asked about um, uh, I guess uh, butt joining is what you would call it. Uh, two regular pieces of wood together and hiding the seam as best as possible. And that's hiding hiding the seam is really tricky if you've never done it before so you will definitely have to practice with some scrap pieces of wood but you can do it um it depends how stiff a joint you need like you definitely don't want to use like epoxy or something like that a couple of tricks that are out there is like you can take pva like regular old wood glue and mix it with um uh the <coughs> So a couple tricks out there are you can take regular PVA wood glue or something like that and mix it with um, sawdust from the workpiece. That way it's roughly the same color and then put it on fairly thin and clamp it. The, the problem is um, PVA has water in it, so you get swelling on the joint and uh, then you get discoloration as that glue kind of like seeps into the, the grains and dries. So there is a thing called hide glue, and oops, my microphone's falling off. There's a thing called hide glue, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, just gelatin, and it's very clear, but it doesn't hold quite as well as like, you know, tight bond PVA, stuff like that. Uh, probably like two thirds or three quarters as well, I would say, something like that, if you do it right. Um, but it's very easy to get a joint hidden with it, and you can just use regular clear edible gelatin if, if you want to. Um, but one thing you can do is, let me see if I can find something as an example. That's uh, just a random 3D printed part. So let's say this is the end of your wood that you want to join to the other end of your wood. You can kind of like, just in the middle here, make it a bit concave. That way you have... A, a little bit just like fractions of a millimeter in here where there's contact area for the glue and you're not going to get all the squeeze out when you smush it together and then this very end here you can clamp that tighter so then you have that little cavity inside where the glue is and then up top this can be fairly dry so then you're just having wood against wood and if you had uh, planed it and sanded and prepared it you know well enough that there isn't a gap and then you clamp it fairly hard you should have a fairly invisible seam after you do some light sanding over top of it so anyways woodworking tip for the day let's see what else <clears throat> blixum donder says uh keep up the good work most people are unaware that the spark test exists spring watching the video brought back good memories he tells a tells a story of uh when he used to work on rusty pieces of metal. And yeah, that's the, the spark test thing. That, that's an old trick. I, I learned that from um, one, of, one of my old bosses uh, when we were trying to identify some kind of bolts or something like that, just zipping them off on the grinder. And then I you know looked it up in old timey textbooks. Like I, I don't read novels and things like that. Usually I read old textbooks and like technical manuals and like, you know, Sylvania receiving manuals and things like that. Um, my favorite book is probably the Radiotron Designer's Handbook, edition four. But anyways, um, it has a bunch of old like, you know, rule of thumb folksy type of tests like that, but they're incredibly useful. And those are the kind of things that come about from people with like decades of experience in this sort of field. So yeah, if it works, it works. It's not an exact test, but you could definitely tell like hardened steel from stainless from, you know, other things. Um, so yeah, respect your elders and learn from them. I think I'm going to end it there. We've gone back like a month. There's a bunch of questions on the linear rail thing, but I'm going to hit on some of that in a live stream, uh, talk about some of the problems that I had with it and, and that sort of thing, um, what I think they're good for, what I think they're bad for. Um, and then anything else that I catch before that, I'll put in the live stream post follow-up edited Q&A section. 
So anyway, thanks a lot. Sorry for the sparse videos again. Uh, I have been working hard on this thing, try to get everything working as quickly as I can. I guess now I have a little leeway, so I'll probably put a proper video out here as, as soon as I can, probably after the weekend, early next week. Um, and again, um, if the date for the live stream changes or the time, I will let you know. But as of right now, it will be the Saturday after St. Paddy's Day Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, United States. So thank you very much, and I'll catch you in the next video.